Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. You're watching In Deep on the Delta and today I'm going to be answering a few of the questions that I've gotten about identifying vegetation out here on the California Delta. And we're going to specifically talk about the Elodea, the Agyridensia, or the Hydrilla. That's all basically one plant. It's all in the same family. It doesn't matter what we're looking at. Uh, it's it's all the same. It fishes the same. We're going to get into that. We're also going to talk about water primrose and those are probably two of the most prevalent vegetations out here. The primrose is a floating vegetation. The uh, the hydrilla or the um, uh, elodea, agyridensia, whatever we're calling it, is submerged vegetation. And I'm, I'm taking for granted that everybody knows what a tule looks like and everybody knows what the floating hyacinth look like here. So let's start off with the uh, the water primrose. And if you can see in the background here, that stuff, that nasty stuff that is growing up, kind of brownish right now, that is the water primrose. When it um, is actually growing, all that will be nice and green and it'll have some pretty yellow flowers. We're in the middle of winter now, that's a lot of the die off that's what's what's happened you know, through the winter. And uh, as soon as spring comes around, it's gonna start growing, you'll see it start flowering, and it's nasty stuff. And the way that you're going to really identify this stuff is if you look down in it and grab it, it's got just a nasty root system. This stuff here is starting to grow a little bit. And it's not as, you can break this apart, break this apart if you try, but as the spring comes around and this stuff starts growing, this root system, which is only about the size of maybe a pencil lead or a little larger right now, is going to grow to the size of your finger. And it's going to be really tough stuff to fish through. So what we have here is water primrose. Now it can have, you know, uh, a gyrodensia in mixed with it. It could have duckweed. It could have a number of things that are, that are growing with it, along with some hyacinth that may float in here and start growing too. The problem with this is it's very difficult to fish around. The root system is so dense that you just can't really do anything with this stuff except for maybe throw a topwater hollow body frog over the top of it or possibly punch in it. I don't like punching in this stuff. I really don't like throwing frogs over it because if you do get a big fish to come up and he takes you down in that stuff, you're just gonna really have to muscle him out of this. It does attract a lot of bait fish uh, whether it be fry or bluegill or whatever the the prominent bait fish may be whatever season the bait fish will hold in this so there are a lot of fish that will swim around this stuff on the edges and that's basically what I like to do I like to fish the edges of this uh, especially in the summer when a big patch of this may be growing uh, out in a flooded island or something uh, you'll have fish that kind of use that as a magnet and they'll just swim around it and they'll pick off the smaller bait fish that are in the root system. So what I'll do is I'll throw, maybe I'll throw some top waters along the outside edge of it or I will throw a chatterbait or something like that and I'll work around the entire piece of vegetation no matter how big it is. It may be 10 feet by 10 feet, it may be 50 by 50. Whatever it is, I'll work around that whole uh, patch of vegetation and see if I can come up with it. Not my favorite stuff to fish. It's nasty. You don't want to throw anything with an exposed hook into this stuff because you're just going to get it hung up and more than likely you're going to lose it. Even if you can get over the top of it and try to pull it out, if you can't grab that hook and pull it out, you're probably going to break off unless you're using really heavy braid. So this is the water primrose. We're going to uh, pull up now and we're going to go take a look at the agyridensia. Give me a minute. We'll check out some more vegetation. Okay, we're back and we're out in a bed of Elodea out here. And we talked about uh, identifying uh, this plant. And Elodea can be called Elodea uh, agyridensia. A lot of people will call it Hydrilla. Hey, we got a visitor out here. But you can see this stuff that's matted out, out here in the middle of the, uh, the uh, uh, slough here. It's all the same thing. We actually have no um, hydrilla out here. It's it's either scientifically called Agyridensia or Elodea. And that is this stuff here that, that's very common out here. It's all over the delta. Um, 
The only difference between the hydrilla and the elodea is if you're a biologist, the little fronds of leaves out here, the edges will have a, um, uh, a little ridge on them, almost like the ridge of a dime. So there's no difference in the way this fish is it. Nobody really cares what you call it. But this is what it looks like, and it generally grows from about two to four feet of depth out to about eight or ten feet of depth. Now in the delta, because we have a tide, you may find this stuff growing in a foot of water. You may find it growing out to maybe 12 or 14 feet of depth. It just, it's, you know, it's a little different because we're, we, we've got the tide out here. This is the stuff that, that creates the troughs in between the brick brack or the rock banks. And you've got that little trough that um, uh, drops uh, right off of the rock. And then you have a bunch of weeds. It's generally this stuff here. Now, this is great stuff to fish, and the nice thing about this is it just breaks very easily, no matter when it um, is in bloom. And all of this stuff out here basically blooms in the spring. It really, it, it gets really dense out here. I mean, I'm just pulling up a handful. It's, it's just, you know, all over out here. We're not going to get rid of it. The thing about this, if a boat comes through and the prop comes through here and bust it off, it doesn't kill it. As that stuff floats down the, um, uh, the channel or wherever you are, it's going to just reroute somewhere else. And that's why it's, it's kind of a necessary evil that we have uh, fish and game out here or actually boating and waterways um, coming out here and spraying all this stuff. If they didn't spray it, we would not be able to fish the delta. It would, be, it would become so dense out here. So this is what it looks like. It's got a nice green tinge, tinge to it when it's growing, kind of like this. A lot of this stuff out here, if I was to pull up one without disturbing it too much, it's kind of almost got that little slime on it. That's because this is um, the weather has basically started to you know kill it off, or 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 it's not really growing. And as it dies off, it will get that brown, nasty stuff. Some people call it witch's hair, whatever you've got. It'll have a problem like that. Now, with the LED out here, it's great stuff to fish. You can punch it. Uh, you can throw chatter baits through it. You can rip, you know, anything like a, uh, a, a lipless crankbait. All good stuff to fish uh, in this stuff. Uh, throwing frogs over the top of it are great because the fish will just hold down in this stuff. And unlike the primrose which has that just nasty root system I think the fish find it a little harder to move around it they can just swim through this stuff holds a lot of crawdads a lot of bait fish if you find holes in it they're really great places to throw a, a t-rig worm or a creature bait or a uh, uh, you can punch through it so guys if you know how to identify a water primrose and the elodea or the agiridensia you know what a tule looks like, you know what the hyacinth looks like, you're going to get by with about 90% of everything you need to know about the vegetation out here. We can talk about duckweed, we can talk about, you know, uh, alligator weed, uh, there's probably, geez, I think there's 40 or 50 different types of, of uh, invasive vegetation out here. But as long as you know the basics, you're going to be just fine. If you want more information on some of the oddball stuff that's growing out here, um, hit me up in the remarks and I'll definitely go over and we'll talk about some of the other stuff that grows out here. If you like the uh, uh, program today, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button, and um, I think I'm going to go out and see if I can't catch a few fish, maybe in some of the holes of this uh, Egeridensia, and uh, we'll see what happens. So thanks for watching, we'll see you guys on the water.